I think Giger is a, is a visionary. I think he's um, absolutely frightening. You know, um, as an artist, I, I'll never have that degree of, of creativity, inventiveness, or genius. And at the same time, I, I, at the same time, I don't want it because it's just far too scary and spooky. His world really, really, um, you know, it's one of the, the most genuine, genuine visions of hell that, that we've known in, in the recent past. You know, the guy is, is really horrific. He's a very strange person. I mean, uh, I don't believe there is anybody that that is as strange as he is in his peculiar way, and therefore the right guy to design the alien. And so Giger designed the alien for the first picture. It, under, it underwent a little bit of a transformation when Cameron did Aliens. And now Fincher doing Alien 3, it underwent yet another little transformation. So uh, it's flexible, but it's definitely with that, with that head and the jaw that comes out and, and all of those uh, uh, sort of trademark uh, aspects, it gives flexibility so that you can, you can work with it and people always recognize it. He really did uh, broaden the, uh, the, the horizons of, of the movie Monster, and he, his, his look, the biomechanical look, is so unique. Uh, Gordon Carroll told us that uh, when they were uh, uh, working on the first film, uh, Giger had some sculptors working for him that were old-time, very experienced uh, 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 sculptors who worked on monsters and, you know, throughout the, the, the years. And they were saying, you know, what, what is this stuff with the bones and the, and the tubing and all this? You know, you, this is never going to read. You need, you need wrinkles and warts and scales on this monster in order to make it look really scary. And luckily, uh, luckily nobody, uh, nobody went for that, and Giger got his point across. But uh, he, really, he really does have a, a, a body of work that, that, that is, is special. You know, you can't, you don't, he's not a monster maker. And, and because he's got his, his uh, he's a fine artist and he's got his slant on things, uh, it, it gives a different look than you would get by pulling a monster maker in off the street and saying, you know, do the most, the strangest psychosexual creature you can come up with. You'll come up with something, chances are, you know, that's got wrinkles and warts on it instead of, uh, you know, what he came up with. He started with uh, life-size paintings of the alien on huge canvases front and side, of the, to the same degree of quality of his uh, museum paintings. That was how he started. And at that point, he thought that his commitment was finished, and that since he had done such a thorough job of depicting it in paint from different angles, that now, you know, that the producers would find a technician who would make that 3D. But, and he went back to Switzerland, and they tried, but um, the people that the producers were able to find were not able to sculpt what Giger had drawn. And he came back after a few weeks and took over. And he had enough pride in his work to not be willing to let what they were doing appear in that fashion. Somewhat in contradiction to his personality, he's a very nice person. He's easy to talk to, and he's easy to work with. And uh, I, he's a genius at what he does, and it kind of goes hand in hand. My experience uh, over the years of working with artists of different levels of talent, usually the, the most cooperative ones, it's not 100% rule, it's about 90%, but the ones that are uh, the most cooperative are usually the geniuses. They're usually the most open to suggestion and uh, the last to get their back up about uh, criticism of their work. Whereas you move down the scale to people who don't have much talent at all, these are people that are impossible to work with by and large. They don't want to hear your input. They refuse it to do, to do it any way other than their own. They're usually bad-tempered, unreliable. And um, Giger was a very hard worker, always open to suggestion. You see, the thing is, a guy like Giger, he knows that um, someone comes along and says, why don't you put six fingers on the thing's hand rather than five? The reason he doesn't get his back up is he knows he can do that well also. And uh, the really talented person knows they can do a variety of things well. 
Whereas the person with very little talent knows damn well there's only one thing that he can do which will pass. And if anybody tries to make him do anything at all that deviates slightly, it's going to be horrible. So if you really want to find your prima donnas, you know, you, you, you pick them from among the no-talent bums. Those are the guys that are really impossible to work with. The ones, I won't do this, and I have to have a long lunch hour. The ones who are good, if they show up in time, they work hard, and they accept rejections without resentments. And that was what Giger turned out to be like, finally, when uh, he did uh, ship aboard on Alien.